Here's a lovely little problem. I'm going to start this now. Four sunflowers. So what could we investigate? For this you're going to work in pairs and I'm going to give you you're going to work with either sunflower A. In today's workshop, we were modelling um, a new method for teaching algebra. Are all right with now, that? Now, this would be an area of maths that most students would have some difficulty with because traditionally it is taught and examined in a procedural way with, that, with very little context or application. So even with students, very high-achieving high students, they at some point hit the challenges with algebra. So we're going to take a look at it and see how can we actually increase their understanding of algebra. Well, I've learned a lot of new ideas and it's renewed my enthusiasm for getting back into the classroom and trying out the different concepts and with, uh, in a refreshing approach. So we're not using, we don't need to use the rise over because it says the same reasoning. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the same reasoning rather than that right over Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. What values are the same? No, I I I could uh, I'd say right, let's yeah. look at three things. Let's yeah. look at height. Let's just continue the table. Yeah, of course, you know. That'd be good on. That's what a lot of them would do, especially when you're talking about day nine. Yeah, especially if they're yeah. juniors. You have to guide the students. Yes, you have to give them freedom, but you have to guide them as well. So, a lot of challenges. I would say the main challenges are a shift in the way we teach in our classrooms. Traditionally, maths teachers would teach very much, much in isolation. Teachers have said they need to work more collaboratively. So we tend to work on our own, whereas now teachers need to get together, share resources, divide the workload, chat a bit more about what's going on and what's working and what's not working. I think um, the challenge for the students and for the parents as well is that parents' um, comments sometimes are, but you're not doing maths. It's not the maths that, that we know. It's not what we consider to be algebra. Three up and one across and then they're adding the three. And by this one using two up and one across and then they're adding six. So they're kind of they're kind of finding the connections in the algebra and the missing flowers from the graph. So we can go back here and then say, is it true that if you double this and add six, does it always work? And that's what six is not using that word. Six from there, right? Yeah. yeah. They have to have a more of an open mind and see maths as a more creative subject for themselves. So the challenge for them is to realise that maths is all around us. It's very creative, it's artistic. So you've done your table, you've done your graph. And you went ahead of ourselves. Yeah, you're fine. Which was a huge uh, amount for teachers to take on board. As the workshops are unfolding, teachers are now beginning to see the benefits in their classroom. So there would be less concern and less scepticism. That's good because you're showing that no matter which two points you choose, yeah. the, yeah. the, the yeah. slope is the same. Exactly. That's two over one. Yeah. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. And they will be constant lines because the flowers are growing yeah. all the time. So this is the constant in on the equation of the line, isn't it? So that's three there in the sunflower race. So that's the point you said. The sunflower exercise. Uh, worksheet. I definitely bring that back to my class. Again, it's, it's one where the students participate, they, they draw the graph, and I guess what's really important is they actually see a relevance for the exercise. They can actually relate it to everyday life. When you add them, you want to get. So I'm now ready, Zex. Are we, are we yeah. to give them, well, it doesn't matter what we call them. So we say red is X. And I must say on the whole, teachers participate fully in the, the workshops with all activities and they put on their students' hat and they experience the methodologies um, from, from being in the, in the students' shoes. So that can be very difficult. It can be very hard to stop thinking as a teacher. What else can you see from the graph? Parallel. So what did that tell us about their growth rate? Same. same. And from the table we identified, identified it as the same rate of change. So what should, what way would that connect to the graph? Rate of change would be equivalent to the slope. slope. And Brendan and Michael did a lovely job on this one. 
I found it very interesting that we can use algebra by using everyday situations rather than just sticking to uh, a book, a textbook and uh, following it slavishly. That brings it more alive for the students, especially younger students. We can relate uh, maths to everyday things in their own lives and once they can see that it does have some sort of uh, influence on their lives that uh, they're using maths all the time whether they know it or not.